Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and we're back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we're going, going to talk about best practices on housing your quail. Now we've started a playlist, it's in the description, the link is, and we've already talked about feed and best practices with feed. Today we're gonna to talk about housing. And uh, so I'm going to tell you what we recommend other ways to do it and why we recommend it. And then you'll decide what works best for you. So this playlist is completely um, focused and purposed around ideas on how to raise your quail and how you need to raise them for you. There are hundreds of different ways to raise your quail and there's no right or wrong way to do it. But let's get started, shall we? So housing quail. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how many quail per square foot? What we recommend is three quail per square foot. How we came up with that is we've done some testing and research. We put five quail per square foot. We put four quail per square foot in different cages at the same time. We put one quail per square foot, so on and so forth, right? And we checked fertility. We checked how the hens were doing, how they looked. We checked um, egg production and a lot of different things. And so when they were matching up together, we were taking them out. So uh, the five to one, or I'm sorry, the five quail per square foot uh, showed a lot of aggression and lack of production. So we got rid of it. The one quail per square foot was almost no production. So we got rid of it and we just kept narrowing it down. So. We recommend three quail per square foot, which is what we do here, and uh, it, it works out great. That's how we did it. So to us, three quail per square foot is maximum production and happy, healthy quail. So that's what we recommend. Second, best practice, how many hens per male? Again, you're gonna find a lot of different information out there, and that's okay. Uh, you're gonna hear 10 to one, uh, 10 hens to one male. You're going to hear one to one and anywhere in between. I don't think I've heard anything over 10 hens to one male, but we recommend five hens to every one male. We don't follow this. Let me explain why. What we do here, because we ship out so many hatching eggs a year, we actually do a four to one uh, ratio, four hens to every one male to increase that uh, fertility rate a little bit more. So let me break that down to you. Again, we've done some testing and research long ago, and uh, so this is what we came up with. So I had to look at my notes. So when we did the five to one ratio, the fertility consistently was between 87 and 94% fertility. So that's pretty good. Um, the four quail, four hens to one male was 95 to 98% fertility. However, the hens would start looking a little rough after about two or three months, just excessive breeding, okay? We need that extra fertility because we're shipping the eggs. So you're gonna lose some fertility in shipment. So we need to offset that. Uh, so our hens don't look, they don't look awful, but they also don't look like they're brand new either. That five hens to one male will keep your hens looking very good and your males are going to be satisfied because as you know, or you need to know, males are very active. Uh, they, they like to get around. Um, so they eat and fertilize hens. Sometimes they drink some water. That, that's their life. Um, so with the five to one ratio, your maximum production is gonna be really good. For best maximum egg production, it's actually a four to one. But again, your hens are gonna you know, get overbred, you're gonna start losing the feathers on the back of the head and things like that. Uh, I don't prefer it, but I need to make sure you guys are taken care of and you get a good hatch rate. Uh, so that's why we recommend a five to one. Again, there's many different ways to do it. You just need to find out what works best for you. Other housing. So we talked about uh, how many quail per square foot, okay? It does not matter your cage size, whether you're buying a Wynola Ranch cage or you're buying a Dale's Quails cage or you're building your own cage or whatever the case may be. That's not a big deal. It does not matter. What matters is three quail per square foot of living space. 
What I mean by that is if you have a cage and you're putting a feeder and a water in that cage, you need to subtract how big that feeder and water is because that's not living space. Okay, uh, so that's something that we learned along the way, and hopefully that's a, tri a tip and trick for you to help better your experience with Caternix quail. Now, um, we do colony breeding here, so we have very large cages. Um, like I said, we still do three quail per square foot, and we do a four to one ratio, but we recommend a five to one. It'll help, I promise. Um, we have one long trough, one of the big troughs from Wynola Ranch, per cage, and then we customize a rabbit feeder. We pop the builder built all of the feeders here, but it's um, it's like a rabbit feeder, just much larger. And uh, that feeds about 55 of our quail per cage. Uh, so one feeder, one water, and they're on the outside of the cages. Because if they were on the inside, we'd have to decrease how many quail is in each cage. Um, Another good example or another best practice is if you're building a cage, make sure that you're not taking it too far deep. Um, long term, you want to be able to reach in there and not struggle. So, for example, our cages are 32 inches um, in, in width because uh, I can get all the way in the back without having to struggle. Um, and then make sure you don't get it too high or make sure you don't get it too low where you're bending over or you're on your knees all the time or whatever the case may be. So you want it accessible long term. Okay. Uh, the last best practice that I want to give you is what's the cage space. I'm sorry. What's the space between the door and the bottom of the floor for egg rollouts? What we do here is not what we recommend. I'd like it to be a little bit different. And uh, we're gonna work on that this year. But what we do is a, an inch and a quarter. <clears throat> the inch and a quarter space for the egg rollout works fine for all the standard uh, size quail. For our jumbos, it starts to become a pain because they're, they're hitting up against it. And then I have to open the cage, get the eggs out and things like that. So if you have jumbos, it's a best practice to do an inch and a half on the egg rollout uh, space between that and the door. Um, and then if it is standards, an inch and a quarter would just work. But if you're going to be building one, you might as well just do an inch and a half anyway. Um, another best practice that I didn't even write down and I didn't even think about until now, and hopefully this will give you something to think about. And again, if you do it differently, comment below. I'm completely fine with that. There's many different ways to raise quail. And if you do it differently, let everybody know so that maybe they can do your method. The last one I want to talk about is flooring. So in our brooder room, which is going to be the next, next video in this playlist, best practices, but in our brooder room on the flooring, we do um, half inch. When we built all of our cages, we did half inch wire because it's a lot cheaper, except um, it's not long term. So we really recommend one by half, one inch by half inch. Uh, and they can go on that in as little as three weeks old. Um, they really can't go on that before then. There's going to be issues. They're going to get their legs stuck through, whatever the case may be. So if they're under three weeks old, we highly recommend half inch wire. We don't recommend quarter inch, um, because the poop doesn't go all the way through. You can possibly get through with it, uh, or get away with it in the brooder, but in the layer cages, um, we really don't recommend it. Uh, half inch, we started having a lot of issues, poop buildup, things like that. Uh, so we've went over to inch, half inch by one inch, and it's working wonderfully. Also, best practice, use galvanized or uh, PVC coated wire. PVC coated is kind of like, you know, the best of the best. And then the good is galvanized wire. Um, it will eliminate or prevent uh, bumblefoot, which is an infection on the, in the feet. If you use regular wire, it's not galvanized. Uh, there's going to be sharp pieces. They're going to cut their feet. Infection will grow and then they'll start swelling up. Um, it usually doesn't affect their production, but it doesn't look good either. And you really don't want a bunch of quail with bumble feet. Uh, so because we have so many cages and they're so large, in our main barn, we actually use galvanized wire. Um, 
And then in the brood room, they really don't need PVC coated. They're not in there for very long as far as a brooder goes. Uh, so we don't even recommend PVC coated in there. Just use galvanized, it's a lot cheaper. You'll be just fine. Um, so hopefully that helps. If you have any other ideas, comment below so other people can see it. Thank you for watching and uh, I can't wait to do the next video. So stay tuned, hit the like button, subscribe and support the channel. And as always, stay safe.